A key feature of the arid woodlands of western New South Wales is Electrium oleofolius, which is often referred to as rosewood in Victoria, but more often as bullock bush or cattle bush in New South Wales and other states. It's a very widespread species, but all the trees in the landscape from research that I've conducted have come from prior to European settlement, and there has been no regeneration of the tree since then. The seeds are very difficult to germinate. It does produce plentiful seed after a wet winter, um, but that seed does not result in any, in any seedlings. In a couple of examples where I have seen seedlings, the growth rate is so slow that there is absolutely no chance of survival because of the high palatability of the leaves and the increased grazing pressure across most of their range. On Nanya Station, which was a pastoral property but is now a research station belonging to Federation University, we have been looking into methods of promoting uh, and increasing the amount of rosewood in the arid woodlands by building on the fact that observations that it tends to sucker after the roots have been disturbed. So what we have done is deep ripped around stands of rosewood with a very heavy tine, about 50 centimetres, which breaks the roots which spread many metres in all directions. And we can see here that there has been um, prolific suckering in the rip lines around these trees and now they've grown up towards a metre tall three years after the ripping. Because we actually want to promote um, the trees further out into the spaces in the landscape, we have ripped at different distances and, and the the suckering has been promoted up to 30 metres from the parent tree to produce suckering away from the trees. The feature of the tree is the fact that it is very resilient despite the high palatability and across much of the landscape it is grazed to the goats can reach standing on their hind legs. That's something over two metres. But on Nanya where we have reduced grazing pressure by removing, continually removing goats and also closing all the earth tanks so that our kangaroo population is down to more natural levels and we are now getting prolific regeneration, regrowth along the stems and from the base of the existing standing trees. We have previously looked at direct seeding and planting seedlings and because of the very low and erratic rainfall, the average rainfall in our area is 200 mils. Two or three years ago, we got 75 mils in the year. Uh, the highest was back in the 70s where we got over 600 mils. So it's very variable and it comes in high short-term falls. And unless you can be totally confident of a good year of reliable rains, then planting direct seeding are not very effective. It needs to be a deep tine, a minimum of 40 to 50 centimetre tine, and needs a fairly heavy tractor to run that in these soils. It is important to make sure that when you're doing the ripping, you're not, you know, destroying other perennial components of the understory. Once we have finished the current second series of trials, we will be uh, producing uh, reports and uh, guidelines to how the technique can be applied uh, more widely in the landscape. We are fortunate in having 40,000 hectares at Nanya that we can apply research trials like this in a, a real situation, and we are very grateful to the New South Wales Environmental Trust for funding this program 